Penguin Random House Audio presents The Gift of Forgiveness, inspiring stories from those who have overcome the unforgivable. This is the author, Katherine Schwarzenegger Pratt. This book is dedicated to my family and to all those who have practiced or are brave enough to start practicing forgiveness. It is dedicated to all those who have granted it and received it as well. It is my hope that all of us come to realize that we are all struggling in some way and that each of us can be a force of compassion, empathy, understanding, and love in another person's life. About Forgiveness The pain was necessary to know the truth, but we don't have to keep the pain alive to keep the truth alive. This is what has kept me from forgiveness, the feeling that all I've been through will evaporate if I don't relive it. That if those who have hurt me don't see what they've done, my suffering will have been for nothing. In this, the stone I throw in the lake knows more than I. Its ripples vanish. What it really comes down to is the clearness of heart to stop defining who I am by those who have hurt me and to take up the risk to love myself, to validate my own existence, pain and all, from the center out. As anyone who has been wronged can attest, In order to keep the fire for justice burning, we need to keep burning our wounds open as perpetual evidence. Living like this, it is impossible to heal. Living like this, we become our own version of Prometheus, having our innards eaten daily by some large bird of woundedness. Forgiveness has deeper rewards than excusing someone for how they have hurt us. The deeper healing comes in the exchange of our resentments for inner freedom. At last, the wound, even if never acknowledged by the other person, can heal and our life can continue. Mark Nepo. Introduction. I remember the exact moment when I knew I wanted to delve deep into forgiveness. I was standing in the parking lot of a local restaurant I love when out of the blue up walked the girl I'd once called my best friend. We weren't just best friends. We were like sisters, inseparable since birth. We'd shared everything, from our birthdays to our clothes, our friends, our families, our secrets, and our dreams. We felt like we were one and the same. In fact, most people said our names together, viewing us as the pair that never split. Then, more than 20 years into our friendship, we had a falling out, one that shattered me down to my core. Her absence left a profound hole in my life. For the very first time, I was living without my best friend by my side, and I didn't know who I was without her. The end of our friendship affected all areas of my life. It was awful, and it broke me. After I was able to gain some distance and take time to process this change, I told myself I was okay and that I had forgiven the person I once thought of as blood. Shortly after declaring that I had moved on, though, I ran into my old friend and knew immediately that I was nowhere near over the end of our friendship. In fact, I wasn't even close to being over it. Standing in her presence, I felt anxious, scared, hurt, angry, and tremendously emotional. And I knew at that moment that I never wanted to feel like that again, especially around her. It was then and there that I made a promise to myself. I would re-engage in the work of forgiveness. This time, I would go deeper. I decided to go to therapy weekly, and sometimes I even went twice a week. I sought help from my priest, my pastor, and I spoke to people of all faiths and no faiths. I talked to those of all ages, all backgrounds. I spoke to friends and even to people I didn't know that well. I found that there were many who had similar experiences with unhealed ruptures. I went in search of stories of those who had forgiven so I could be inspired to forgive and move forward in my own life. Some might think that having a fight with your best friend sounds trivial, but for me and many others with whom I've spoken, it is not. I've come to learn that ruptures and relationships come in all shapes and sizes, and no one can tell you how to process a hurt like yours, what it will mean to you or how it will affect your world. I knew that when it came to forgiveness, I had my work cut out for me. And if I didn't get this right, I would have that pit in my stomach for the rest of my life. I knew it would end up traumatizing me. The moment my old friend reappeared, I realized that forgiveness was a far deeper and more complicated subject than I had thought. 
and it was something I wanted to get better at practicing. I'm so grateful I decided to start the work of understanding forgiveness then, because it's truly the work of a lifetime. It's hard to get through life if you don't know how to forgive others. Those you once loved and still love, and oftentimes most challenging, how to forgive yourself. Forgiveness isn't about simply saying, I forgive you. It's about doing the work of letting go, which for me has proven to be the gift that keeps on giving. When I look back on my journey of forgiveness, the most important thing I have learned is how powerful the gift truly is. I encourage everyone to try to welcome the gift of forgiveness into their lives. It is an endlessly fascinating journey that will allow you to continue to grow and be tested over time. I am, of course, by no means an expert on forgiveness. In fact, I consider myself a student of forgiveness. I am constantly learning about the process, which is why I wanted to write this book and interview the people within about their unique journeys with forgiveness. The conversations we shared cover some of the most incredible accounts of inspiration, heartbreak, awe, and hope I have ever witnessed. But before I tell you how the relationship with my old friend ended up, let me take you back to the beginning, when I had my very first brush with, I'm sorry. I was on the playground at school in kindergarten. I distinctly remember the anger in my five-year-old body when my friend lied to me about a play date I had not been invited to. I remember going home and crying to my mom about how sad I was that my friend had lied to me. My mom explained that everyone makes mistakes and that we have to learn to forgive our friends. So that's exactly what I did. I went to school the next day and told my friend that I forgave her. She said she was sorry, and we hugged, and we made up. Years later, I came to learn that that was not, in fact, forgiveness. Forgiving too easily can lock you into unhealthy patterns that can last for years. By not properly addressing an issue or event, we avoid things we actually need to confront. We bury things that should, in fact, be unearthed and we protect people who need to be given boundaries. I've learned that forgiveness can sometimes make you feel weak and other times can make you feel strong. It can trap you or it can set you free. What I've come to learn is that real forgiveness is much more nuanced than what you learn in kindergarten on the playground. It's not a single step. It's not a simple, I'm sorry. Forgiveness involves honesty, courage, self-reflection, the ability to listen closely. It involves the desire to forgive and maybe not forget. And most importantly, it involves a lot of love over and over again. Practicing forgiveness is its own reward, a gift both for yourself and for the world. Now, back to my old friend. Today, I am happy to say we are friends. That pit in my stomach and all the anxiety that once existed is gone. Now we both have a lot of love and respect for each other, and we wish each other only the best. When we see each other, we laugh, share old stories from our past, and catch up on our present lives. This forgiveness is one that is ours. It is a shared journey, a choice we both made and continue to work on together. The goal was not to have the same closeness we had growing up. Rather, it was about being able to make amends and move forward. I call this kind of forgiveness conscious forgiveness a conscious choice we make and remake over the course of our lives to forgive and move on. Whether it's in your family, in your friendships, your marriage, separation, divorce, or even in death, it is a choice we make and continue to make forever. The work I did on my own to understand the fallout from the break in my friendship has allowed me to take a deeper look at myself and at my own role in the friendship's demise. It also enabled me to look at other relationships, to see where I may have forgiven too easily, not communicated clearly enough, or buried resentments that came up in other ways. In learning how to forgive my friend, I also learned how to forgive myself and others who I felt hurt by. All of this is what has pushed me to do my own brutally honest work and to find a new way forward with love and forgiveness. I'm proud to say I have done so in all areas of my life. And all of that brings me back to kindergarten. It turns out the lesson I learned so many years ago on the playground had some truth to it after all. We're all human and we all make mistakes. And at some point in our lives, we will all be in the position of either asking for forgiveness or granting it. 
The good news is that the power to ask for or to give forgiveness. Sample complete. Ready to continue? Complete. Ready to continue.